My favorite thing about making vegan stocks is A, they taste really good. And B, they are also, apart from the frittata, one of the things that you can do to reduce food waste in your home. Keeping like a bin in your fridge or a freezer bag or even like one of those bags that you can vacuum seal full of vegetable scraps like onions, tomatoes, like the ends of tomatoes that you don't use. Keeping them all in a little container for you to use at like the end of the week is a great way to reduce the amount of things that you just add to a landfill. In my opinion, when you're making a vegan stock, it requires a few more components than a regular meat-based stock would because you wanna add more sources of flavor, but also pay attention to things like mouthfeel and fullness. Meat-based stock have the benefits of having bones cooked in them, which means they get collagen, which is what gives us that really like satisfying fullness in their broth. So there are multiple ways that you can achieve this using a vegan broth. You can use starches from things like potatoes. You can use cornstarch as a thickener. You can use barley. You can use specific mushrooms or you can use seaweed. All of these things add some kind of plant-based thickening agent to give your vegan stock a really satisfying body. We have a combination of things here. I've got onions that I'm pretty much using as a base, some corn for sweetness, some leftover garlic chive blossoms, but these could easily be like a bunch of scallions if you like. A couple of pieces of kombu, which are optional, but you know, if you have it and you can find it, definitely use it. Dried mushrooms. The best kinds that you can use in the case of a broth is probably shiitake or porcini mushrooms. I'm adding two types of barley. One is toasted barley. Koreans use it for tea a lot, and I think they use it in Taiwan for tea as well. It gives things a nice toasted sweetness that is very conducive to like savory flavors. And then pearl barley, which we're going to use as one of the things to thicken the soup and to give it like a nice full body. Okay, so as far as spices, I picked out a couple that I thought would be nice in this. Uh, bay leaf, star anise, jujubes, also known as Chinese dates. They're not related to Mediterranean dates. I think that's where my jewel dates are from. I don't know. But anyways, it's a different thing. They're not as sweet. They're a little bit tangier. Smoked black cardamom, licorice root, cumin, fennel, and white pepper. And we're gonna put all of the really small spices in this strainer, just so that it makes it easier to take out of. If you make a lot of soup or sauces or deal with a lot of whole spices, particularly small ones, I highly recommend you get one of these because you don't have to continue, keep buying like cheesecloth or stuff. You just use this and you drop it in. So the beauty of chopping vegetables for stock is that you don't really have to worry about it. Especially like you're just trying to get it the pieces as small as possible without you know Really thinking about it So that they all can get plenty of surface area and a good roasting, but otherwise you're gonna strain everything out anyway, so As far as I'm concerned like everything that doesn't have dirt on it is a source of flavor so that includes your onion skins that includes like the green parts that are growing out of the onion. Like we're trying to limit, like we're trying to really limit the amount of waste that we add. And stocks is one of the best ways to use pretty much everything that we can. Same goes for shallots. Whenever you cook, whenever like I cook shallots for a recipe, I always seem to like have one left over. And it's great to just keep in a Ziploc bag in your fridge. Same goes for ginger, keep the skin on. Okay. This, I'm just gonna throw it like this. There. Give it just a light coat. Excuse me, just get <laughs> you give just a light coat of oil. Go. 
and just like roast this in the oven for like 30 minutes at 400 degrees ish. So while all the vegetables are roasting, we're going to just lightly poach this kombu or the seaweed. I think it's kelp. I think kombu is kelp. But anyway, we're gonna lightly poach it. You can't boil kombu because otherwise it gets really, really acrid and bitter quite quickly. So you just keep it um, poached very quickly at a lower temperature. Basically, when you start seeing like a few bubbles start to develop at the bottom of your pot, that's about the ideal temperature to actually poach the kombu in. While the water's going, we will assemble our spices. About like three star anise, two like discs of licorice root. This is easy enough to take out. We're not gonna, we're not gonna put that in there. I would say a, that's like a tablespoon and a half of fennel. About a tablespoon of cumin. One black cardamom pod. Three bay leaves. A cup of dried mushrooms. Let's make that two cups. We'll make two cups of dried mushrooms. Ah! <laughs> okay. About a quarter cup of toasted barley and um, the same amount of pearl barley. Now the toasted barley you're not going to eat because it is pretty like tough and it still has the hulls on it. You have the option if you choose to put the pearl barley in with the final product and you can like eat that because like cooked barley is, is great. Um, Barley has gluten in it, so if you're gluten-free, do something else like cornstarch or something. Two teaspoons of pearl barley. Uh, so this is the temperature that it should be for the kombu. You see these like salt crystals on the kombu. Uh, we're going to very gently rinse this off as little as possible. What I did here was I got it to have bubbles on the bottom and then I pretty much just turned the heat off and we'll just let that steep for like 10 minutes and then I'll take it out. You can actually reuse the kombu and like simmer it a little longer to use less potent stock, but the first steep is always the strongest. Another thing to add, so this is mushroom seasoning. If you're used to like chicken powder or Maggi cubes, this is like the vegan version of that. This is just, what does it say here? Salt, wheat starch, which has no gluten in it, by the way, because it's just a starch. Mushroom powder, mushroom extract, sugar, and vegetable oil. That's all that is in this. It's pretty much concentrated mushroom essence. Um, I use it a lot when I make vegan stocks. I put it into the mix of my vegan filling for dumplings. Um, Egg, well, eggs, I guess you wouldn't have to, but it wouldn't be vegan if you use eggs, but still, eggs. Yeah, it's just a really good vegan substitute for any kind of bullion powder, and it adds just a little bit of that umami goodness to the stock that you would otherwise be missing. You can also use yondu, and of course, just a tiny bit of MSG. So at this point, I just tasted this. Once kombu has added like its essence into a broth, it should taste a little briny, a little vegetal, but can't leave it in for too long, otherwise it gets quite bitter. So we'll just take this out, and that is all we need for that. It adds a really nice, subtle, kind of like briny, earthy low note to your stock, and it's a good base on which to build everything else. For this broth, what we're going to do after we finish it, we'll use it in two different ways. We'll make one, a vegan miso soup with tofu, and then the other one, I will reduce the other portion and use it to braise bok choy, almost as like a thick sauce. There we go. So all of this will go into the stock and that will seep. 
you had a dedicated broiler setting on your oven, you can use that to finish off and get a nice char on your vegetables. So in here we got onions, garlic chives, garlic, shallots, ginger, all of them have been roasted quite nicely. And we're just gonna add them into it the stock. This is great. You can smell like almost a jammy sweetness from the onions in here and the shallots. And that's gonna translate so well. What are you eating? That, you can't eat that. Stop it. That's, this is a piece of wood. All right, we are mixing these in with our other aromatics, dried mushrooms, spices, bay leaves, uh, black cardamom pod, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight jujubes, not that big thing of ginger. Um, and we're gonna cook some corn in this too. Just a few teaspoons of mushroom powder. Tablespoons, just a few tablespoons of mushroom powder. <laughs> and then finally add in your dry spices and your barley. Bring to a boil and then reduce to a simmer and then just let that go for like 45 minutes. Oh yeah, that's really good already. Yeah, we can totally use this now. So, we're gonna take this stock and use this first as a base for miso soup, and then we're gonna take some more of it and then use it as a base for braised bok choy. To stop your cutting board from moving around, you can put a damp towel underneath, and that way it will stop sliding. I'm not doing that because that requires me to go somewhere else. We're gonna put some of the stock in and use it as a base for the miso soup. Making different kinds of miso soups based off of the stock that you use is one of my favorite ways to like switch things up or adds like kind of like a dynamic variety to just like uh, the basic miso white miso paste. Uh, for example, like uh, kabucha squash, you can boil Japanese pumpkin in there, you can do it with dashi, you can do it with chicken broth, you can do it with bone broth. It all adds a different kind of character to what you know as miso soup when you're making it at home. When incorporating miso into a broth, I like to put it through like a small little strainer and like kind of press it in. Um, that way you won't get like chunks of miso paste in your soup and it just makes it like incorporate a lot faster. You're also not really supposed to let your miso boil, but it's okay. And we add our tofu. Had stuff like wakame or seaweed or anything else that you'd like to put in, that would be this would be the time to do it. Alright, now for the next thing. Alright, normally I would use bigger bok choy to make this dish, but since I bought a whole bunch of bok choy to make, I'm gonna try making kimchi again with it. I'm not gonna do another video of it, I'm just gonna make it. I figure we can just use a couple of these to demonstrate that dish. So, for this, we're just gonna cut these bok choy in half so that it's pretty. Are you just doing laps? He doesn't know what's going on. Oh, 
way. So the way that I like to add cornstarch uh, into a soup or a stock or a sauce is to make a slurry. Um, to do that, I'll put like two tablespoons of cornstarch into a mason jar, fill up with double the amount of water. That's not a person, Mochi. Put a lid on it. Make sure the water is cold, otherwise it's gonna lump up. And then put it in a mason jar and just shake it until it is all clear at the bottom. Well, not clear, but like all the lumps are gone from the bottom. Now, just, you know, right before you pour it into the sauce, give it a shake just to make sure it stays like incorporated. Switch this over to the induction side because the induction side is stronger. What we're doing is, is we're just braising the bok choy in once things get really nice and green. Things have softened a bit, just a little bit, because we want the leaves to be soft, but we still like with like a little bit of crispiness. And to this we'll add. Oh my god, I'm not ready for that. Okay, teaspoon of oyster sauce. A touch of light soy sauce, white pepper. Give things like a little mix. And then we add our cornstarch slurry and everything up. Just a little at a time, because it will really, really get thick. Mm, yeah, a little bit more soy sauce. It should have like a nice vegetal sweetness to it, but still be like quite salty. You can add MSG to it if you want to. I'm not going to do it this time. Mostly because it's like, I don't want to reach for anything right now. <laughs> tired. Yeah, okay. Ooh, it's hot. Gorgeous little vegan vegetable broth. So all of this came together because I just compiled some things that I wanted to have for stock, but also using like what vegetable scraps that I had from other things that I had made over the past week. A really good stock is very powerful and the versatility that you have from just a really good stock recipe just can pretty much take you anywhere from a sauce to a soup to just like a sipping broth that is delicious and that you can have any time of day. So that's it. Uh, like and subscribe and I will see you guys next week or whenever. I'll see you guys whenever.